All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll get to work on a supercar, super rare, super, some kind of car. It's rare, it's um, highly desirable, it's a Corvette. So we've done another Corvette before, but this time we got it back from the auction, from the, what, 600 mile road trip. Oh yeah, Florida. It did really well, you know, there and back and on the road. I drove a little bit, Michael drove a little bit. I mean, I, I would say it's pretty cool, you know? I think I like the Camaro a little bit better. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll drive a little bit longer, but I think the Camaro, the ZL one we had, was a little bit nicer. But leave us a comment down below: the Camaro or the Corvette? I but, drive, I drive the Corvette for sure. I mean, I didn't drop, I didn't drive with the top down. So so nice. You just pull up to a light and just automatically, as you're driving. Oh, it's a head turner for sure. I mean, I don't. I like the rear, the front. To me, it doesn't go for me. But anyways. Today, we're gonna start working apart. We're gonna take it apart because what we noticed was the driver's passenger seat was not moving forward and back. It was tilting. So most likely either the motor's bad or who knows, but we're gonna take that seat out. We're gonna inspect the seat. We're probably gonna lift the carpet up and uh, get all that inspected. And we hopefully won't find any water damage because so far it's been looking good. Um, but if we, had, if we had to buy a new seat, I mean, these seats are probably cheap. Maybe like $2,000, $3,000? Minimum. Or we put some racing seats from my Honda Civic, you know? Yeah, these GT3 seats, you know. They're pretty sweet. Um, so I put the top up or down, and it's gonna be a little bit easier, but hopefully I can unscrew this thing, because it doesn't want, it wants it and doesn't want to. Yeah, it's right there. So let me put some more power to it, who knows. But hopefully it's not gonna be like too much work where I had to like cut the seat apart to get to the bolts. I hope oh, not. Oh man, that'd be bad. But we're gonna learn. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart and hopefully find no more hidden damage. So, I'm pretty excited. You excited, Michael? Oh yeah. So let's get straight to it. So it tilts forward, that's nice. Dang, it's definitely a beautiful seat. How do you get to those back bolts? That's gonna be fun. Maybe try to look underneath and... Who wants to? It's got like the eight position seat thing. Lift it up. Get a flashlight and see what's going on in there. Maybe clean the connector. Alright, so there we have it. So I just kept massaging back and forth, maybe helping it from the back, push it, push it. It finally actually broke loose. And you can see right here, I had a little corrosion in the rail. So I think the motor's fine. It's just the, the motor had a little debris in it or corrosion or whatnot. So definitely could have had water inside. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit of water came in and out. So hopefully, I and mean, that is basically the lowest spot right there. So. But yeah, not bad. I mean, we got that anti-rust stuff that I did for the Mustang seat. That worked pretty good. So we'll clean up the rails and... But we might as well take the bottom carpet off. Yeah, definitely. And inspect everything. Oh yeah, we're gonna keep digging, but... Hey, good job, Ed. Get it out.
right, so there we have it. We got the carpet all lifted up, and then I noticed that there was this computer in the back, so I might as well take it apart and make sure there's no corrosion going on, but this is for the, the amplifier, and the system was working on this thing really nice. Also, I noticed there was this kind of residue, but I don't, I don't it's not water. It's like maybe some kind of gel or something, or something. I mean, it's like square, and it's only where the bolts were. Everything else looks completely dry. Also, the carpet. I mean, usually with water, it'll have stains. It'll be a different color, but this looks all original. It's all dry. There's no issues with it going on whatsoever. So I don't know. Maybe water came in quick. Water came out quick. I mean, the seat rail, everything looks good. It's working now. There's no corrosion whatsoever on anything else. This is the bare metal. So you can see right there is a little bit, but not too bad at all. So most likely I'm just going to put everything back together and that's it. So let's assemble it and maybe do the other side. All right, so here is the other side. As you can see, it looks really good. Definitely no corrosion or anything going on. This side's a lot cleaner than the passenger side we did. So I'm still gonna lift up the carpet, look underneath, but uh, it's looking good. So we'll clean up the carpet, check it out, and go from there. So we've got this little trim piece off, checking out the carpet. Carpet is looking good, underneath is looking good. There's no issues going on whatsoever. Check those little wire clips. Everything over there is looking good. So what I'm going to do is vacuum it all up, put the seats back in, and they'll probably have to scan it and delete all the codes because we unplugged everything. We'll go from there.
All right, so we got this thing up in the air and we might as well change the oil. So I went to the dealer, got the oil, and also they recommend the transmission, adding two quarts of oil to it. Did some research, they say that's a good thing to do. So we're gonna check the transmission fluid, might as well top it off a little bit more. But underneath this thing is looking really good. It's all covered up, so you can't really see anything, but it looks super clean. So let's go ahead and change the oil. And then add in the transmission fluid, it's actually gonna be a pain in the butt. But we're gonna get it done, so let's get straight to it. All right, so just like that, we got done with the oil change. The level's looking good. But then I was looking at the oil, and this is the only stuff that this takes, and this says it's a supercar. So I don't know about you guys. Do you guys think this is a supercar or not? I think it is. I mean, it's pretty pretty new and pretty exotic, having an engine in the back. It drives pretty nice, and it's a you know head turner. So the next thing I want to do is actually lower this, and we're going to add the transmission fluid. So they say it's under the air box. That means I gotta take this off, or open this up, take all the parts off inside, and go from there. So let's see how this turns out. So there we go, just like that, we got the transmission topped off. As you guys can see here, it's actually a breather for the transmission and water, I don't think got high enough whatsoever. You know, we did the transmission thing, now we can put this all back together. But I gotta say this again, this air box out was a pain online, looked really easy, but for some reason it was a pain. Maybe because it's a roadster and other people can get in there, but I had to literally close this, open this, close this, open this. like. You can't have both of them open at the same time. So let's go ahead and put this all back together. And Alright guys, went ahead and washed the Corvette, the C8, and man, it looks amazing for sure. Cleaned up really nice. 
Honestly, it looked good to me even when it was dirty, but wow, what a beaut for sure. I'm actually gonna go ahead and go to the dealership. I'm gonna do a car inspection on it, do like a 160 point check, make sure everything's good. Cause I mean, I feel confident about it, but it'd be nice to have a certified Chevy dealer to look over it kind of thing and just go over all the stuff, make sure it's good. But dang, it's looking sweet. Finally, the sun came out. It's actually been rainy for a couple of days. So I couldn't even get any good shots of this thing, but it is beautiful. Oh yeah, guys, what a deal. Check out those rims. I mean, let's just go over the car real quick, talk about what we bought here. Cause honestly, it was so spontaneous. It was like, hey, we're there and all of a sudden this thing's playing and we got it. So very last minute, but wow, beautiful ride. So this Arctic white 2021 Corvette Stingray convertible with the interior jet black and our drilling in red. I mean, this thing is top of the line, like I mentioned. I didn't even know when we were buying it, but I knew that Stingray R is pretty cool. So that's actually an additional $700 graphic decal kit for the wheels, for the side. So that's pretty sweet, already included. This thing is a 3LT. So they come in 1LT, 2LT, and 3LT. And this thing, like I said, is the top. 3LT, all the interior being redone, all that suede and stuff being installed on it thing. Wow, very gorgeous. And also it is the hardtop convertible. So they make them the coupe, they make them the hardtop removable, and then the automatic hardtop convertible. Like I said, that is the most expensive version of this. And that's exactly what we got. So the sticker price for this thing was close to $80,000 without any of the options. And this thing is the Z51 performance package as well. So not only is it hardtop convertible 3LT, it's also got the Z51 addition to it too, which that includes the rear axle performance ratio is increased, high performance tires, Z51 spoiler, electric limited slip def, Z51 performance suspension, brakes, exhaust, it's got a heavy duty cooling system also added, another $2,000 addition to it. Another $2,000 Z51 performance suspension, magnetic, magnetic self ride control system. Dang. An additional $1,500, 19 front and 20 inch rims in the back. Dang, dang, guys, this list goes on and on. All the additions that they put on it, close to $18,000. So you're looking at a hundred thousand dollar just sticker price for this puppy. And then there's always the add on to it because they're limited edition. It's hard to get. You're going to be waiting for six to eight months to get one kind of thing. So it was definitely hard to even pick one up. So get one white and red, very rare. I'm sure they're out there, but at the same time to get this performance package, so clean. I mean, honestly, it's immaculate, beautiful. I only found like a couple little scratches on it, hairline stuff. Wow. What a deal. So today's market value for this in the low price range, you're looking at $90,000 and to the good, you know, higher end, if it's really clean, low miles, you're looking at $121,000. So we got it for half off and we drove it home. Honestly, I don't see any water damage to it. No signs of flooding. Everything's working. There's so many electronics in this thing and beautiful. She's definitely a beast. Zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds, zero to 107.2 seconds. Roll and start, five to 60, 3.5 seconds. Man, definitely got some power, that V8. The power to weight ratio, that's basically what they said, all you need. You don't need a supercharge, you don't need a turbo or anything. That's definitely enough power for the cornering and everything, just have that V8 in there, which cranks out a good bit of horsepower. So with the Z51 performance package, you got 495 horsepower and 470 pounds of torque, which is pretty crazy. The increase of five horsepower because of the Z51 package. I mean, a little bit of boost, whatever, a little bit of boost helps kind of thing. Why not? And overall, this car only weighs, only weighs 3,647 pounds. So that's not bad. I mean, even with the hard top on there, all the electronics, all the little motors going on to get this thing going, 3,000 pounds. Oh yeah, it's definitely a fun road trip coming from Florida on it. It had only 6,000 miles on it. Now we're at 7,000 miles. We, we're driving it, you know, might as well enjoy it. All right, guys, so check it out. First, you have to unlock the car, double tap. Yes, yeah, double tap, front 
trunk opens. So beautiful. I mean, that's what we would take apart to check out the battery. Got it all back together and looking beautiful. That is such a deep tub, surprisingly. Looks awesome. Beautiful. Leave that open for a second and go on to the trunk. You still do have some trunk space too. Pretty sweet. Uh, you just kind of close that and it automatically locks down. That's awesome. Dang. And I mean, so far still, my favorite part about this car, not only the look, it's just a hard top convertible. Wow, so much fun driving down the road. And then you just, you know, hit the button and this thing just transforms. Beautiful. There's the trunk space, whatever. Engine at the bay itself. As you're driving. I know I keep mentioning that, but not a lot of cars you could do that, you know? Right before you get on the freeway or something as you're driving, just boom, top up, good to go, or you get off the freeway and it's beautiful weather, top down. Amazing. So I don't think you're gonna be able to open the trunk if you're viewing the engine compartment, which is fine, that's kind of right there. Man, so brand new inside, everything looks so clean. It's at 7,000 miles, ain't nothing to it. Man, looking good. Arctic white shines gray in the sun. Super clean. Beautiful car for sure. I don't think we've got a bad deal. So let's go ahead and talk about the interior a little bit. I love this aluminum casing over the Bose speakers, and man, these things definitely bump. It's pretty crazy. Very high performance on it. Beautiful suede, red stitching, like we said before, with that LT3 brushed aluminum with the Z button. Oh, oh, so nice. It's nice how the seat moves back and forth kind of thing. Um, it says you have to buckle the seatbelt to shift it. So it's like a safety feature that they have. I guess that's pretty good. You wanna buckle up before you wanna go anywhere. But since we're just talking about it, let's just go over all the fun little things about it. I love the heads up display. Can't see it right now, but it's on there and that changes too. A lot of different options you could have. Obviously this thing's got heated seats, cooled seats, full auto, all that fun stuff. Very neat little display for the controls. I love it. Some people don't like it, it's like too many buttons, but that is very slick. And I love how the CarPlay just hooks up to your phone automatically without a wire. And you could just go ahead and put in the wireless charging if you need to, but that, that is definitely sweet to have. I've never seen that before without a wire, having CarPlay or whatever you wanna do. So your phone is displayed on there and you could just see where you're at and everything. But man, I definitely feel comfortable in this thing. Plenty of leg room, that eight position seat adjustment. You can go up, down, forward, back and forth, side to side. I mean, whatever you want, honestly. Very nice. The square wheel, it's kind of cool. I, I'm, I'm digging it, you know, it's different. Gives you room, so not too bad. Some people like it, some people don't. But I think it's pretty cool. Shift your paddles. Obviously they couldn't make this thing manual because of this is where the rigidity is and they can't put the shifter there for now. Maybe they'll figure something out later, but I like it too. You just put in drive and the power's there when you need it. You got a little paddle shifters. Not even bad, honestly. Very nice. Overall, very beautiful interior. I like how the screen is actually tilted towards me, so it's facing me. I got all the information there and also on the heads-up display. This little mirror is pretty awesome. It's actually a camera, so when you're, you don't want it, it's just a regular mirror and you flip it, the camera engages, so it's really nice. HD, beautiful. Overall, just a very beautiful car. Little carbon fiber, those GT3 seats, whatever, vented. Oh yeah, because you start going fast, you start sweating. I love it. Man, it's just awesome how you could take the top down and up as you're driving. Definitely a flex once you're going on the road and you pull up to a light or something and just turn the top down. Definitely a head turner. People are like, what? I mean, that's pretty sweet. But let's go ahead and head to the dealership. Our appointment's now, so let's go ahead and get this thing checked out. The ones without the spoiler. Definitely like the spoiler look. Looks like something's missing. Man, these are beautiful. I guess these are pre-used. 
as is, no dealer warranty. Oh no, how much are they? Definitely are some beautiful cars. All right, guys, just like that, got the inspection done and looking good. The only thing they found was a little flare piece right there, deflector or something got to replace, but a little plastic piece right there in the bottom. So no big deal. All overall beautiful, everything checked out. Great inspection. They said it's a wonderful, beautiful car and I agree it is. Let's go ahead and head back to the shop. All righty guys, back at the shop. Safe and sound. It was a great drive. Had fun checking it out, going to the dealership, getting all that, you know, checked out. And yeah, the only thing they found, like I said, was that one little piece that we've seen right away. But overall, is that why they salvaged it? Wow, that's pretty crazy, guys. I mean, wow. Pretty insane. Nothing wrong with it. Drove great from day one. Smelled brand new. We took it out, took the seats out, took it under the carpet. Awesome. Great find, great buy. So I think for $63,000 basically after fees and gas and everything, get it down here. I think we got a steel deal bringing it home. Wow, I am really happy with it. Feel very blessed, but thanks for watching guys. Make sure you stay tuned. We got some more builds coming. I don't know what we're gonna do with this thing. Might sell it. It's still a good chunk of change. You know, drive around for a while and you know, move on to the next car. Hopefully get a different supercar, I think. It's pretty cool. Definitely really nice. But leave some comments down below what you guys thought of this project. Did we get a good deal, bad deal? Who knows? Thanks, guys. Appreciate all your support. Can't do without you. See you next time.